Matthew Judon, Body Built by Taco Bell. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of Time to Football. I'm your top button wearing host, Asan Khan, and in this video, we're going to be discussing Cam Newton and what the future holds for the former first round pick. $19 million is what the Carolina Panthers could save if they decide to release him. That's not a lot of money compared to other first rounders and other franchise quarterbacks. Believe it or not, there are many more things I value in this world than money. Here I am in my garage, just bought a used. 2010 Nissan Sentra right over here. Fun driving around the potholes of Metro Atlanta. Got a little side swipe right down here. But you know what I like more? The materialistic things? Knowledge. Before we go any further in the video, we're gonna tell you about Overlay DFS. Listen, you guys love fantasy football. You guys love money. Obviously not more than knowledge, but why don't you just give Overlay a shot? Come on. All you do is pretty much guess which player is going to have more fantasy points for that week. This week's matchups include Drew Brees versus Jameis Winston, Alvin Kamara versus Michael Thomas, Kenny Galladay versus Austin Hooper, and so many more matchups. This past week, there was someone that put down $109 and won a grand prize of over $28,000 because they were 12-0 in their predictions. Since then, the jackpot has reset but is steadily increasing. To sign up, go to www.overlaydfs.com. The link is in the description or download the app for iOS. <music> Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker was an automatic 4 for 4 in his field goals this past Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings. But what makes him the hungriest player of the week was because of the last two field goals that he had for the day a 54-yarder to tie the game and send it to overtime, and then a 44-yarder to win it in overtime. In those high-pressure situations, Harrison Buttkicker had ice in his veins. He was more cold than the frozen hands of a Philadelphia receiver. Get it? Because I keep on... I uh, guess I dropped the ball on that joke. But Butker led the Chiefs to 26-23 victory over the Vikings, and that is why he is the hungriest player of the week. Now we're going to talk about Cam Newton's future. Where is he going to play in 2020? We're going to talk about three specific teams, only the realistic scenarios and not every single quarterback needy team where it seems like a long shot. For example, the Cincinnati Bengals seems like a long shot. If they truly want to move on from Andy Dalton, they're going to bring in a new quarterback in the 2020 draft, or they're going to spend time in developing Ryan Finley. They're not going to bring in a veteran, let alone a veteran that was drafted in the same class in 2011. Same goes for the Denver Broncos. If they want to move on with Joe Flacco, develop Drew Locke. With Miami Dolphins, if they want to move on from Josh Rosen, they're going to draft someone new, more than likely, in the 2020 draft. There's option number one. He stays with the Carolina Panthers. In my opinion, I feel like this is most likely to happen. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I totally get the $19 million thing, but that's right around the average for a franchise quarterback for someone of Cam Newton's caliber. On top of the money, the reason why the Panthers would move on is because they believe that Kyle Allen or Will Greer, who is related to Nash Greer, that famous Viner, would be the future franchise for the Carolina Panthers. And while it makes sense with the way that Kyle Allen has been playing recently, Cam Newton is just on a different level. He's a game changer. And not saying that Kyle Allen isn't bad, he's doing great. He's doing what he needs to do to win games. But we just haven't seen that game changing play out of Kyle Allen just yet. This whole offense has been centered around Christian McCaffrey, but if you put Cam Newton back in there and he plays at the highest level possible, then Cam Newton can help the Carolina Panthers get to the Super Bowl. He's done it before, Kyle Allen has a shot to do it this year, but if injuries and age aren't a factor anymore moving forward, then Cam is the best option for Carolina. The second option for him is to play with the Chicago Bears, and while this seems like a realistic opportunity, I just don't see it happening. I feel like the general manager, Ryan Pace, wants to prove that he didn't make a wrong decision by trading up to grab Mitch Trubisky. I feel like Pace doesn't want to go back on his decision. He had a chance to draft Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson. Instead, he wants to prove that Mitch Trubisky was the right choice for the Chicago Bears. For the next year, in 2020, I see Mitch Trubisky being the quarterback, but if we get the same year like we are getting in 2019, at that point, I feel like Pace would accept Moving on from Trubisky. 
However, by that point, by 2021, it'll be too late to sign Cam. So what do you do if the Panthers release him going into 2020? A realistic scenario, even though we don't believe it's gonna happen, could be to sign Cam for three or four years on the Chicago Bears. Talent-wise, the Bears are a playoff team with the exception of the quarterback position, the only position holding them back. You don't know how long this window is going to be open to make a playoff run for the next two or three years, so why not bring in a quarterback that is an improvement to not only make the playoffs, but also a Super Bowl run? The last team that we feel like has a chance to sign Cam, the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill has been playing at a very high level, but is it the future for the Tennessee Titans? The Titans are in a weird spot with quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota, he's done. He's not the future. They're going to move on in Tennessee. Ryan Tannehill, he's been great, but with his contract coming up and with him playing at an elite level, he's going to start asking him and his agent for franchise quarterback level money, 20, 21, 22 million dollars a year. So if they can re-sign Tannehill for a lot less money, then Tennessee will be content with Tannehill as their quarterback. But if they can't, then why not just sign Cam Newton for the same amount of money that Tannehill and his agent are asking for. Tennessee is also doing pretty decent this year, so they're going to be in the middle of the pack for the 2020 draft. So your chances of getting a high first round pick and drafting a franchise quarterback like Tua or Jalen Hurts or maybe even Justin Herbert from Oregon, it's very minimal. So you got two options, re-sign Tannehill or bring in a veteran like Cam Newton. But leave a comment down below and join in on the discussion. Where do you think Cam Newton will be playing in 2020? Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with a new episode every single week. Also, hit me up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The username for all three is at Time to Football. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week.